Classes often represent a blueprint of an object and contain properties, methods, and events for that object. A text box or a button or a movie clip are all considered classes. A class might also consist of just a collection of methods, and that's what the math class is. There are various methods here for performing different mathematical operations, aside from and beyond our basic operators that we saw in the previous video. So we did see the math.floor uh, method earlier. So math is the class, floor is a method of the math class. And so we refer to it in code as math.floor, and then inside parentheses would be the, the container or the variable that we want to have this operation performed on. So the floor method simply takes the highest integer below the value of x. The seal refers to ceiling, and it is a method of the math class that takes the next highest integer above the value of x. POW is a method that raises x to a power of y. And notice in the parentheses there, we have two arguments that are provided, x and y. x is the value being raised, and y is the exponent. The random method generates a number between 0 and 1. It would be a decimal number. The round method rounds x to the closest higher or lower integer value. SQRT performs the square root of x. And then there's things like constants such as pi. If you want to refer to the value of pi, you can just use the constant of math.pi. So that's not a method. Notice it doesn't have any, any parentheses. It is, you can really consider it almost a property of math and use it as a variable. It is a constant, so it would never change value. So in the next example I'm going to show you, we're going to find the hypotenuse of a right triangle given side A and side B. You might remember from your high school geometry class that to find side C, it is the square root of A squared plus B squared, the Pythagorean theorem. So to represent that in a action script 3 statement, where we want to find the value of side C, side C would equal math.square root, or SQRT, and then inside parentheses, we want to do a squared plus b squared, and we would do that using the POW method. So math.pow, we're going to raise side a by double, by squaring it, so the value of 2, plus side b raised the value of 2, so that would be math.pow side b, comma 2. Those two expressions are going to be executed and then added together, and then we take the square root of all that inside the parentheses. So here then is our example. I've created an application that has a dynamic or input text box for side A, an input text box for side B. The user can enter those values. I specify default values of 4 and 3. They're going to click a button. By the way, those, those two text boxes are named side A underscore TXT and side B underscore TXT. A button named calculate underscore btn. They click that. It's going to calculate the value of side C, or the hypotenuse, which I've named hypotenuse underscore txt, where that's going to be displayed. This is a dynamic text box. Another dynamic text box will calculate the area, which is going to be 1 half of 4 times 3, or 1 half of side A times side B. And then the perimeter, which would be the addition of side A plus side B plus side C. So the, the way around this right triangle. So we're going to calculate all three of those with the calculate button. So we need to add a actions layer. I'm going to name it actions. And we'll bring up the actions editor. So we need to create an event listener for our calculate button. We're going to use a mouse event of click. And it's going to call my function very simply calc. Not going to return anything, so return type is void. 
and I'm going to create a couple variables. I'm just going to use A, B, and C again, keeping these very simple, very simple program. Uh, these are pretty self-explanatory in terms of the Pythagorean theorem. So A, B, and C are, are valid names for um, variables, even though they're not very demonstrative in terms of the name. In light of the Pythagorean theorem, they really actually kind of are. We'll specify those as numbers. A is going to equal the number value, or the numeric value, of side A underscore txt dot text. B will equal number side B underscore txt dot text. We need a semicolon there. C then is going to equal math dot square root. SQRT. And what we want to take is the value of A squared plus B squared and that combination will then take the square root of. That's our hypotenuse. What I'd like to do is just limit that to two decimal places. And so one way I can do that is have C equal to C times 100. And I'm going to take the math dot floor of that value. And then that expression, I'm going to divide back by 100. That'll give me just two decimal places. Just a little trick. Our perimeter, let's create um, a couple more variables. I'm going to come back up here to A, B, and C, and I'm going to do one called Perry and one called Area. Perry, which would be our perimeter, is going to equal A plus B plus C. And our area is equal to A times B divided by 2 or multiply it by half to do the same thing. And now I need to output those values to our text boxes. So we have hypotenuse underscore txt dot text equals, and take the value of C and convert that to a string before I assign it to our text property. Do the same thing for the area and the same thing for the perimeter. Check my syntax and let's run this. So I have 4 and 3, uh, side C should be 5, and that is, area should be 1 half 4 times 3, that's 6, and 4 plus 3 is 12. If I put in a uh, some different numbers here, such as 7.45 and uh, 5.98, do my calculation, side C now is limited to two decimals. I didn't limit the area or the perimeter to decimals. I probably should have. We can go back and change that in our code, though, and limit those to two decimals in the same way that we did uh, limiting side C. So area equals map.floor area times 100. Take that whole expression and divide it by 100. And now let me execute this again. Taking those same numbers, click calculate, and now we limit the two decimals.
the perimeter, I don't have to worry about being more than two decimals unless I entered more than two for side A and side B. When it adds those, it's not going to be more than two decimal places.